If you work in a hospital, at some point you've probably heard the phrase value-based purchasing. What is that? Value-based purchasing is just one of many value-based payment programs administered by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. So before I talk about value-based purchasing, let's first talk about value-based payments. Historically, insurance companies have paid hospitals for everything that they do, and this is called fee-for-service. Patient gets a heart transplant, the hospital gets paid. Patient seen in the ER for chest pain, the hospital gets paid. Patient gets Tylenol for their headache, the hospital gets paid. We spend tons of money on healthcare in the US. In fact, we spend almost twice as much as the average wealthy country per person on healthcare expenditures. So you would think that for as much money as we spend on healthcare, the US must have the best healthcare system in the world, right? Right? Uh, not really. Actually, if you look at objective measurements of the US and their performance on various things like access to care, administrative efficiency, health equity, health outcomes, the US is dead last on each of these things when compared to other wealthy countries. So the problem with our fee-for-service model is that the hospital gets incentivized for the volume of care that they provide, and not necessarily for the value of care that is provided. The U.S. government signed into law the ACA, or the Affordable Care Act, which was designed to expand people's access to health insurance. But it also contained provisions for restructuring the way that hospitals get paid. Their goal was to satisfy a phrase coined by the Institute of Healthcare called the Triple Aim, which has three strategies. Improve the experience of care for the patient, reduce healthcare costs per person, and improve the health of populations, all at the same time. The ACA ushered the US healthcare system into an era of payment reform, and it resulted in different ways to incentivize hospitals for good care and penalize them for bad care with programs such as the Value Modifier Program, the Hospital Readmission Reduction Program, the Hospital Acquired Conditions Reduction Program, and the Hospital Value-Based Purchasing Program. So now that you know a little bit about payment reform, let's talk about value-based purchasing. Now there's actually two value-based purchasing programs. We've got SNF or Skilled Nursing Facility Value-Based Purchasing Program, which I won't talk about in this lesson. And then we have the Hospital Value-Based Purchasing Program. In the Hospital Value-Based Purchasing Program, over 3,000 hospitals in the US have their payments adjusted based off of the quality of care that they provide each fiscal year. As of fiscal year 2024, the quality of the hospital's care that they provide is evaluated against measures in four domains. These are six measures in a clinical outcomes domain, five measures in the safety domain, a single measure in the efficiency and cost reduction domain, and then finally, eight measures in the person and community engagement domain. The clinical outcomes domain pertains to things like what was our complication rate after doing total hip and knee replacements, or what was our rate of patients dying within 30 days of some event like COPD, acute myocardial infarctions, coronary artery bypass grafts, pneumonia. The safety domain mainly looks at things like how often did the patient acquire infections while they were a patient in our hospital? So these are things like surgical site infections in colon surgeries and abdominal hysterectomies, catheter-associated urinary tract infections, central line-associated bloodstream infections, C. diff, MRSA. Efficiency and cost reduction looks at how much spending there was per Medicare patient in the hospital. And then finally, we have the person and community engagement domain. And this one is a little bit different than the others. The measures on this one come from a survey called HCAPS. HCAPS is a survey given to patients in a hospital that assess the quality of the care that was provided and whether or not the patient was satisfied with their experience. HCAPS will ask the patient things like, did the doctors and nurses communicate with you well? Did they provide adequate instructions for you when you were discharged or when you left the hospital? Was the hospital quiet at night? Was it clean? How likely are you to recommend this hospital to other people? Patients are asked how often each of these things happen. 
So did the doctors never, sometimes, usually, or always treat you with respect? Or was the hospital never, sometimes, usually, or always quiet at night? The always wording is what the hospital aims for, and this is called a top box score. The percentage of patients that answered top box in the question is collected from HCAPS and submitted to CMS to assess how often that hospital provided excellent care. So how is performance assessed on all these measures? Things are gonna get complicated from here on out, so bear with me. The general idea is that there are two time periods, a baseline period and a performance period. For each measure within each of the four domains, the hospital has two ways of scoring points on each of their measures. They can score improvement points, where points are awarded based off of how much the hospital improved in the performance period compared to their performance in the baseline period a couple years prior. The hospital can also score achievement points, where points are awarded based on how well the hospital was able to get close to or beat the top 10% of hospitals from the baseline period with their own rate in the performance period. Each measure is scored separately for these two methods, and then the highest score of the two methods yields the final points for that measure. From there, there are a bunch of formulas that are used to determine how much the hospital will end up getting paid. So if you want to learn the methodology for how that final payment is distributed, I have some links in the description below where you can learn all about the formulas. Every year, CMS sets aside 2% of the total reimbursement that they pay each hospital for Medicare inpatients. Depending on the score of the hospital, some hospitals will not earn back any of the 2% if they performed poorly. Some hospitals will earn a portion of that 2% back, and then the best hospitals will earn back the 2% plus some bonus money as well. This might not sound like a lot, but often there's actually hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars at stake for each hospital in this program, so it's a pretty big deal. Now that you've learned a little bit about how value-based purchasing works, check out this series of videos next where I show you how to build an HCAPS dashboard that allows you to track the best and worst hospitals in the United States according to their patient satisfaction scores. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.